Welcome to my house. This is episode two of My Machining Life. I was going to make this a little bit more professional, but screw it. I don't really care. Uh, I do want to talk about how I kind of came to be a machinist. I mean, I ha I've only been doing it for eight, nine, nine years. Been doing it for nine years. And I just wanted to talk about my experience and what I still want to learn. And a lot of you probably don't even care, but uh, this might help a couple of people out that are looking to do this. So I was lucky enough to be in a family that um, has been machining. My dad has been machining for about 35 years, and his dad was in the automotive industry designing. So, you know, he still kind of dealt with that same kind of stuff. And when I first, uh, I want to say when I turned 17, that's kind of when I hit the realization that I might want to try machining, you know, see how it goes, because it is in the family. Uh, my dad started a shop in a garage about 24 years ago, and I'm 25 now, so he did it around the time I was born, and it just blew up. So he, we, I mean, not like, you know, a giant corporation, but it's, uh, if you haven't seen the episode one, we have a tour, and it started in a garage, and it ended up, you know, a great operation. So it's, it's come a very long way. I didn't know how working with family was going to go. Uh, as most of you know, every family has its own stuff that happens. And, you know, family members and things like that. And I didn't know if working with family would be the right choice. But after I stuck with it for a good year or two, just being the janitor and just cleaning and cleaning the machines and cleaning the floor and cleaning the toilets, I started to get on a manual mill and I started to realize how much I really love this stuff. And... It started out slow and it was very tiring, but I knew that there was an opportunity for me to learn a trade and fall back on. And my fiance, um, my girlfriend at the time, she said that I really needed to go to college because her plan was set to go to college, get an education, and then start making a lot of money. Well, after about a year in college, she uh, and me a year working, she told me not to even plan on going because it was just a waste of time with what I've been learning. And as much as I was making, I wasn't making a lot, but, uh, you know, I slowly started getting raises the more I learned and things like that. And I want to say I made $12 an hour for the first two, three years. And it was mainly because my dad didn't want me to be one of the spoiled kids that worked at his shop and he wanted me to work my way through it. I realize that now. I didn't at the time because I had bills to pay. But um, once I hit a certain point where I could machine on my own and I could program surf cam on my own, which was uh, five, six years ago, he said that uh, I could finally start getting some raises. So that, that worked out. So at this point, I am around 20 years old. I know surf cam. And we have people floating in and out of the shop. I'm not a foreman. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing at this point besides just a machinist on the CNC mill. And then we, we got more and more work. And then I had to bounce around the shop. Go, I had to go to a Mazak lathe, manual lathe, surface grinders, and just wherever I was basically needed to help get the job done. There was only like four or five of us at the time. And at this point... I didn't really have time to look up because it was so much going on. So every day I turned around, I learned something new. And that's what's amazing about this trade is every day you're learning something new unless you're not trying at all and then you might not learn anything. But if you're paying attention, watching somebody, asking questions while you're standing there, you can learn as much as you want. There are books, there are websites, there are YouTube videos. I mean, it's, it's pretty much endless. So... Your potential only goes as far as you want you to go, if that makes sense. The next step in my life was becoming foreman, and it didn't happen overnight or anything. Uh, I remember my my dad sitting me down and talking to me about it, and you know, mentioning that I would be foreman, but he was very hesitant because of my age and because of my experience. And I understood at that point what I really needed to do. What I needed to do is learn at least enough to teach people on each machine to where they can get it running, to where I can help process a part with them. Because if you're going to be a leader or a shop foreman in a shop, you, you need to at least know what's going on on that machine. Because if people are taking too long or if a part could be processed differently or if somebody's about to kill something, you need to be able to spot it at least reasonably fast. So without that experience, you might as well just go up front and do nothing. 
Um, so trying not to be the spoiled ass owner's son, I really, really worked hard. I, I wanted to earn the respect of the people I worked with. Not saying I did earn their respect, but I, I tried my hardest. So it's not always about machining. It's about the people you work with. If you're a great machinist and you know you want to get top pay, you're not going to get top pay unless you can communicate to others because unless you can run that entire shop by yourself, you're not going to survive by yourself. The foreman at the time, not going to name his name, he was kind of a drunk. He would, uh, a couple funny stories. I'm just going to throw them out there, take it or leave it. But he would call us and be like, yeah, man, I'm getting in the shower. I'm almost there, I promise. And he, obviously he was late. Wouldn't show up for three days. And then another time he called us, hey, man, a hooker stole my car. I can't make it in. Straight to the point. Right to it. So there was no excuses in that. So we were like, we kind of laughed it off and, you know, played along with it. But he was a great machinist. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you find a great machinist, they might not be a good person. If you find a good person, you might not have a great machinist. And that's a struggle. Uh, so whenever he got fired, because it eventually was going to happen, that was the day that I, I stepped up and said that I think I'm ready. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to try my hardest. So... I mean, it was only a shop of four people, so it wasn't like that big of a deal. But to me, it was a lot of responsibility. I had to be there every morning. I had to have plans. I had to change the shop because the only way to get better is to change. And yeah, you can do the same things over and over if they're working, but for the most part, every shop can always get better. There's always an opportunity to get better. So I you know, started playing around with the system, how parts flowed through the shop, uh, processing. I still had to machine a lot, so I was still on a machine every day, just like I am today. I still machine all the time. Uh, it's just playing around with being foreman is, it's, it's a fun game because, you know, you could change an entire system and make things a lot faster just by tweaking the system just a little bit. Fast forward to today and uh, again, you can go back to episode one and look at our shop. It is a little fast. I am going to uh, remake that video. But um, today, it's it's going great. I, I love all the team members that I have, which was hard to get. Uh, the trick is finding good people, finding the right people that give a crap. And that is tough to do. It's, it just takes talking to people and having multiple interviews and talking to people. Why, why, why are they passionate about machining? If they're not passionate, there's no point to even work with them. Because machining is an art and there are so many things. For right now, I'm making a thread course on uh, my website and I'm doing research of the history of threads. I mean, there is so many cool things out there about everything in the, in the trade. Uh, it has a history. It has people that helped invent it. It has... Um, problems that could still be solved. It, it's an endless art that I just, I am completely passionate for. And this passion has developed over the years the more I learn about it. Now in my life, I think that it is time to keep rebuilding this business and eventually it's going to be mine one day. I have this website that I've created and it's it's not just to make money. What, what happened was whenever I first started machining, I wanted to look up a website to figure out how to machine. Now, of course, you got YouTube and you got Google and all that stuff, which was fine. I just was kind of sick of bouncing around, not getting the right information that I wanted. And I wanted something kind of clear, laid out, uh, something like a step-by-step -step process. And I went to machiningtutorials.com and it wasn't available. So it kind of created an idea in my head that say, hey... What if I made you know this website? Obviously, at the time, I didn't know enough. So I was like, maybe I'll wait a few years, and if I still feel like doing it, that's what I'll do. And I have put a lot of effort into this website. And yeah, of course, I want to make money. I mean, who doesn't? Um, but I created this website so that people can go to it and have everything all in one place. And I still go to it when I forget stuff. And, you know, look up the formulas and things like that. So I have a feed and speed page I'm working on right now because I'm sick of looking up all these different feeds and speeds. Probably should download a good software for that. And I know they're out there and there's some that are for free, which is fine. But I'm trying to create a website to where you can go on there and look up how to make threads. You, you know, you pay $10 a month for a lifetime worth of education. And I'm working on creating 
courses at least you know one or two a month and right now I'm working on threads which is a whole it's a it's a whole thing but uh, I'm not trying to advertise my website basically what I'm saying is <laughs> I'm, I'm getting off trying to I'm not getting off good God here I am trying to advertise my website, but really the, it's not really advertising. What I'm trying to say is that I'm very passionate about this trade. I, I read books. I've got one right here, pretty old, pretty cool. It's called Machine Shop Operations. And you know, it's a little older, but it's got some pretty cool pictures in it. It's got a lot of different ways to process parts. And there's more than just going to work. You know, I know it's tough, especially if you work over 40 hours a week, and that's some some weeks that's actually very light. I mean, if you're a machinist, some people work 68 hours, 80 hours a week, and that can get exhausting. But try not to lose your passion in this trade. You know, the more you do in this trade, the more you learn. The more you learn, the better you'll get paid. Maybe not at some shops, but for the most part, yeah, you're going to get paid better. It depends on your attitude, depends on how much you know, and your overall passion for learning from mistakes and from others' mistakes and things like that. It is a lot of talking. I'm not trying to just talk your ears off. It's just there's a lot that I've been through as foreman to where it's it's created this this fire and this passion. I created this website to teach people because that's what I wished I would have had in the very beginning was a nice website laid out to where all I have to do is sign up and, you know, watch as many videos as I possibly could and, and even if I don't agree with the person maybe I could pick up a tip or two in conclusion I just want to let you guys know don't don't lose your fire don't lose your passion some days machining can get very tiring just like any job though I mean I complain a lot and I'm really working on trying to have that positive attitude but in the end we're here to make money but don't forget that there is a lot of history in machining and people have dedicated their lives for inventing and improving this trade. So go out there and research. Go to Google.com and Google history of a lathe, Google history of a mill, and it'll, it'll open your eyes to how much people have been through to invent this stuff. Thanks again for watching.